Blake here. We are live for our Wednesday live stream. Every Wednesday at noon for an hour or so, I go on here and answer your questions about anything related to online money making. Is it eBay? Is it Amazon? Is it your own content business? What do you want to do? Uh, let me know and I will answer questions because I've done a lot of stuff and I think I can help you in those areas. So uh, there's, a, let's see, one person here, slow start. As people roll in, let me know where you're from, where you're at, uh, if the sound is okay. I've been having a few issues with sound, but um, that's the way it goes sometimes. So uh, what am I doing this week? Well, so far, uh, I shipped out all my weekend orders yesterday. I uh, had a whole a decent amount of orders, uh, listing more things this week. Again, mostly eBay stuff. I have to buy some more cardboard boxes to prep the VCRs for FBA that I've been doing. Um, you know, takes time. But um, but that's, that's the way it is. So I post it to the Facebook group, post it to my Facebook page. And I really uh, do want to know who is all here, where you're at, where you're from, what's going on. I've got slow mode on, so uh, <laughs> I don't think that should be a big deal. But um, it's going to make it so you can't post. It was actually just kind of on a whim. I turned that on to see how it impacts the chat. We've got Sea Hill in Fort Myers, Florida. My house is a mess. Been sourcing for the past two Weeks. I have actually been on a sourcing hiatus. I've stopped. Uh, I have so much inventory here to go through that I can't justify buying more stuff. No matter how picky I am, I'd rather just go through, you know, clean sweep, clear everything out here, and then uh, and then move on. We've got Live Forty Two Day. Hello, newbie here from Florida. Well, any questions you have, uh, definitely we can answer those. All right, so. What else can we talk about? Let me just make sure the link is working because usually by this time there are a lot more people or maybe just nobody is, uh, maybe everyone's working right now. While you're here, uh, while you're watching, give the video a big thumbs up. It is always appreciated. And uh, I guess we can talk about a few things. Um, Summer stuff, summer uh, retail arbitrage, some things that I've been noticing. Uh, if you go, I've, I go to the you know Target and Meyer every day or two just to like check the shelves, see what's moving, uh, and I've really been surprised by how few toys are on the shelves. Um, you know, from just hearing, looking at that with my own two eyes, and hearing what I'm hearing about um, the delays in shipping. Uh, international shipping, you know, how much it costs for a container to be, you know, shipped from uh, China or, or wherever it is to America really makes me think that we're going to have a lot of uh, shortages for the more in-demand toys this fall, this, uh, this Christmas, this Q4, and I think it's really going to be a huge boon for, uh, for a lot of resellers. We've got Sea Hill, Dana Invests, Thomas, happy birthday from Salem, New Hampshire, Secrets of Wanderlust Reselling. So C. Hill says, how do you normally handle returns? Worried about negative feedback. Um, well, if I have no returns accepted and they bought it by mistake, I don't accept it. If I sent the wrong item, I accept the return. I mean, if you did something wrong, if the item isn't as described, uh, if there was a mistake or whatever, then you kind of have to accept the return. If they just want to return this, and they say that in the return, like, oh, sorry, bad mistake. You don't have to. Uh, in my experience, if they leave negative feedback and it's because they are just mad that your return policy is not more generous, um, eBay will remove that. But if there's any issue with your service or if you're, like, you know, just saying, oh, no, you can't return this even though I described it incorrectly, then that feedback's going to stay with you. Uh, I do not get, do no refund. or I'm sorry. I do not do no return refunds unless it's like a broken cheap item um but for the most part it returns are a natural part of business of selling online and uh you, you have to plan that into your profits you don't want to be selling things so cheap that if you get a return it ruins that item or ruins that week for you um that's a pretty extreme scenario but what you do want to do is make sure that uh you are being treated the way that you would want to be treated um and there's a fine line between 
giving away money and being ridiculous, uh, and also having good, honest customer service. So we got True Rarities, five bucks, love the videos, always super entertaining. So you know what that means, because we got a super chat, if I can find the, uh, well we have this bell here, I have to find the little hammer for it. And every super chat we get, so thank you again, we, uh, we get to hit the bell. In celebration, we've got Dara Gentry, Storage Auction Pirates, and Gero Hustles in Grand Rapids. Fresh from the Goodwill bins, got some killer scores, he says. Your workspace looks like mine. Yeah, normally I kind of clean it up a little bit, but I don't know, you know. I'm doing it, I'm in the middle of an FBA shipment. Uh, I had to clear this all off because I was organizing my boxes and then I just have my sports cards. I went home over the weekend and I grabbed some of my old sports cards. Nothing really too valuable at all, um, unfortunately. I think the most valuable card that I, I had in all of my old cards, and I've sold them a few times when I was younger, was this right here. Michael Jordan Topps Chrome 2003. 2003. Kind of a cool card. Uh, the Michael Jordan base cards are actually worth decent money. Uh, Scott says, Pavlov's dog, every time the bell rings, I flash to my enlisted pile of doom. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's taking me so long to get through my death pile. My death warehouse, it really is, you know. What it is, is over the years, things I couldn't sell on Amazon, I just kind of accumulated. Um, you know, maybe they were, they were broke, or they had a small imperfection, or, you know, the, the listing was closed. And they get sent back here. And um, I've got, you know, a bunch of stuff now that is not really trash. I mean, obviously, it's all being sold for money, but it just it takes time to go through all of that extra stuff. Fair enough. I bought 800 records and a few cash registers last night, so I'm running low on space at the moment. Records, yeah. You know, I never got into records to selling, like, vinyl and that kind of stuff. The grading, the condition was, you know, there's it's very nuanced. Um, and I didn't want to ever, you know, oversell something. There's a few records I've sold that were, like, very rare. But uh, some people I've seen have, like, high-volume record sale businesses where they're just doing, you know, high-volume stuff, kind of like how I'm trying to get into sports cards. I've got about probably 500 sports cards listed right now. I list between 25 and 100 a day. Um, you know, just, just it's kind of for fun. It's kind of to, to learn the process. Uh, A Money says, do you ever buy pallets of returns to resell? Yes, I definitely do. I was on the TV show, Extreme Unboxing. Uh, I bought pallets for that. Once I get, um, there's probably about 600 square feet that I use for storing pallets. That just has kind of like, my warehouse flooded yesterday. Uh, there was like a flash flood in, in my parking lot. Uh, so I had to quick throw down some cardboard boxes to block the uh, block the water from getting in here and ruining some inventory. So I have to clear that space all out, and I'll probably buy four or eight pallets um, sometime soon and do some videos on those. Uh, I've got a, a Dollar Tree video that I have to edit. I, I keep screwing up the details of explaining how to make a thousand bucks a week selling Dollar Tree stuff. It's very detail oriented, and I kind of. Uh, say the wrong words or I have the the graphics in the wrong spot, but whatever we're gonna fix that and then today I have to film what sold last week on eBay and Amazon um, I, My eBay store is up to let's see I had about three and a half thousand dollars in sales last month or over the past 31 days Slowly building that up. I was doing you know hardly any eBay three months ago I was almost all on Amazon, but with Amazon changes that we've talked about with the inventory restrictions and everything like that, uh, I think it's wise to uh, to get back into eBay. Um, it takes a while to build up inventory, I think. But once once I have maybe like you know four or five thousand things listed, it's going to be a pretty reliable like two hundred bucks a day um, profit. Hopefully, hopefully, right? eBay went down in sales the last month or two. Says Storage Auction Pirate. Yeah, you know, the summer's always, uh, there are less frequent sales in general, obviously. Some people sell a lot more. You know, if you're doing retail arbitrage and you're selling inflatable pools and that kind of stuff, you're going to have a lot of money this summer. Um, you know, I, I'm still seeing pools sell for multiples of retail price on eBay. They're kind of a pain in the butt to ship, 
but for 500 bucks or for 300 bucks, it's uh, it's no big deal. Todd says, do you use Mercari? I made about 800 bucks in two months on there, just selling off small things. I, you know, I have a Mercari. I use it a lot more two or three years ago. Um, not so much anymore. Uh, I, I'll sell a few things on there occasionally, like I'll sell some certain kinds of sports cards, sealed sports, sealed like sealed boxes of cards. Those appear to be going for a bit more. Um, there was a time when the, the 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 Mercari fee structure and shipping structure was vastly superior. You saved like five percent basically um, to over eBay, but it's kind of the same now. Um, that being said, I focus on media items in general. Says True Rarities. I sell very roughly equal mix of books, records, CDs, Blu-ray, etc., plus some miscellaneous collectibles, electronics, that kind of stuff. I'm in the same boat as you. Hello, Walter, says Milo P. Uh, if you remember me, uh, I don't know if you remember me, but I am finally generating about 200 bucks profit every month. Not much, but a long way from where I came. Well, good job, Milo. It is all thanks to people like you, Milo. Good job. Keep up the work. Dana invests. He says, yeah, watching the Millennial Profit has sold 20K in pools in the past month on Amazon. It's nuts. Yeah, if you if you can get engaged for for like Intex, for example, that's a big pool manufacturer. Um, you can make some good money. I am not doing that. I am holding back on retail arbitrage, with the exception of like sports cards. But I'm really buying those just kind of for my own fun. Um, this is my current sports card setup. I've got my own little boxes made up, sorted by alphabet, sorted by the uh, by alphabetically. I mean. And uh, yeah, I got about 500 cards listed, I'd say. There's a more boxes than that. Um, my average price is like only $3. So only about, you know, I'd, if, I had to, if I had to guess, I'd say maybe like four or $5,000 in profit in cards, but it's more just me, you know, learning how to ship cards, how to sell cards, learning the industry, stuff like that, and then having a process that I can get into. Uh, I'm definitely making more money selling other stuff besides cards but it's, uh, it's fun. Dara says, I just got a bag full of Xfinity remotes for free. A couple are new in package. The rest look good, work with my TV, but I don't have X5 boxes to test on. How would you sell post these? So uh, to test them, you can just make sure that they have an infrared signal. Uh, use your camera phone to look at the little, I don't have a remote near me, but there's like the plastic end where the rays go out. Look at that with your camera and it'll blink on and off like a reddish purple color. That will um, that'll let you know uh, if they work, and I think those go for like nine or ten bucks a piece. So just do a bulk quantity listing. You know, take a picture of one, uh, put a quantity of however many you have, and I think you will sell some. Cheap cards can keep your account active, and boost other listing though. Says Dana, absolutely. That's my whole strategy on this. You know, I'll list. I want to make sure I'm at least listing ten or twenty-five items a day, uh, just to keep my account fresh. Michael Nunes says, as a newbie, is selling books the best way to get started on Amazon FBA? Yes, I think so. Books are low risk, hard to screw up. They're generally cheap, uh, and it's a very you have a very reliable way of understanding the sales rank system. A Money says, do you list cards by now or on auction? So I'm experimenting with both. I've got a few cards at 195 on auction, like low value cards. Um, to see if maybe I can get them a bit above two bucks, but generally I'm buy it now and I'll send out offers. Where else were we? So yeah, Mercari raised its rates right around Christmas and added a processing fee, so it's pretty close to eBay. Yeah, it, I mean definitely, it's it's like what twelve and a half percent or twelve point seven percent. So uh, you know, it is what it is. All right, what else do we have? We have 59 people here. Uh, true rarities, I love selling long tail antique vintage rare books. I sit for a while, but when the sales come, it's always a nice surprise. I agree, I've got uh, maybe 100 or 200 books listed that are old. Uh, a mix of Amazon high tail, you know, above like 3 million sales rank, and, uh, and eBay. Um, and I sell, you know, it's hard to do like a sell through rate for those because it is so, so rare.
What are some methods for learning about coins and bullion? Uh, so, what do you want to know? I mean, if you want to just see like completed sales, you can go on on eBay and check completed sales or sold sales. Um, but if you uh, if you don't want to do that, then like you just want to learn about what they are. YouTube is a good resource. You know, you've got um, you know forums. You've got Reddit. I'm not sure what you want to learn, so it's kind of hard to say. Uh, what do you think of auction house sites like Live Auctioneers, by the way? I've been buying inventory from them, along with thrift stores, retail arbitrage. Uh, so they can be fine. You know, if there are, if there are good deals there, there's good deals there. Um, you know, what, el what else to say? Do you resell jewelry on Etsy, asks A Money. Uh, I did before. I'm considering cross-posting my jewelry from eBay to Etsy, but I have to see what the fee structure is with a place like Hammock, for example. True Rarity says, sold the first edition of The Phantom of the Opera for $275. Picked it up from the bins. Wow, great pick. True Rarities. That's an awesome find to have. Uh, you were mentioning in a previous video that Amazon's becoming difficult for third-party sellers. Can you elaborate on that? And do you still recommend selling on Amazon? I do, but I think like the days of selling like used toys in collectible condition, uh, a lot of stuff like that, the things that Amazon would prefer to sell in new condition, um, I think those days are going to be gone. You know, in in the in the the future. How long will it take? I have no idea. Uh, but it appears to me that Amazon only wants third-party sellers in a lot of categories to sell new stuff. You know, do they like it when people sell used VCRs? I don't know. I don't think so. It seems like they're making it more and more difficult. But again, I could just be misinterpreting that, and it could just be them not caring at all, uh, and them trying to streamline the more profitable processes at the cost uh, of used item sellers. Now, if you're private labeling stuff, you know, that's a whole different conversation. Um, Amazon is making it better and worse in some ways, uh, but like the, the the ways they've changed branding and gating and the, the rules they make about returns and, and the rules they make about having to respond to customers in 24 hours, that paired with uh, lowered restock rates for a lot of people. Um, you know, it used to be you could send in 20,000 books and as long as you sold, you know, those books in six months, it'd be no big deal. But now Amazon has got uh, a lot, they're a lot more strict about the kind of inventory you can send in. And is that because they're running out of space? I don't think so. So it has to be something else, right? Well, for coins, I wanted to find a compact way to learn their prices and grading, for example. On live auctioneers, I know what coins are worth, and on eBay only has 90-day sales. So you can do a year-long sale using Terapeak, which is free if you have an eBay store. Um, but 90-day sales should be fine for most things, because if you're buying coins, you're not, there's not generally going to be much of a margin on auction, on coins, uh, so you're going to want to be selling things very, very fast. So if they don't have a 90-day sell-through rate, um, you know, if you're trying to find, like, diamond in the rough stuff, that's auctions I would not say are the best for that. Like, if you want to find, like, oh, you didn't know these were worth $10,000. There are enough people doing the same thing you're doing on auctions um, where, realistically speaking, to get, like, a, this scenario where you get coins in great, in great condition that you can grade, or, or, or sports cards you can grade, um, they're going to be from like private sales, like one-on-one, -on -one, like garage sales or someone you know. Um, so like trying to like arbitrage auctions is fine for a lot of stuff, but for things that are so sought after and so easy to flip and are really just are like arbitrage, there's not much value added at all the way you would like testing VCRs, for example. Um, you know, you want to stick with stuff that sells very fast. So the 90-day sales history shouldn't be a big deal, I wouldn't think. You can also use WorthPoint. Uh, that also costs money as well. I'm not sure what the cost is. Uh, Tom Bullard says, Hey, Walter, love the content. 
I'm trying to absorb as much knowledge from you as I can, hoping to turn my years of collecting sports cards, trading cards, and comics and collectibles into steady income. My advice to you, Tom, is start listing them. The best way to have steady income is, uh, is, is to have things, a lot of things listed. You know, you, you, it's going to be difficult to make people buy your stuff, right? But if you, if you have a, a 1% sell-through rate or a 0.5% sell-through rate, and you've got you know uh, ten thousand dollars of inventory that's accurately priced listed. Uh, that's how you're gonna find yourself making a reliable, steady income. Um, or, or what a lot of resellers like to use as a as a, a baseline is one percent sell through rate. So uh, every day you sell one percent of your inventory. Uh, if you have a thousand dollars listed and everything is you know all things equal, everything's listed at the same price. Um, and you hit that 1% sell-through rate, you're making a thousand bucks a day. Uh, obviously, I mean, you know, gross or whatever, depending how you price your things that you bought them at. But what I'm trying to show you is not like, I don't know why you would misconstrue me as saying that's profit, but there are so many idiots out there on the internet. I have to explain. Brian says, question, I have trouble finding enough free boxes for my DVD VCR combos. Can you suggest a cheap place for boxes? What's a good size? Go to Home Depot, buy a bunch of large boxes for a buck fifty a piece or a buck ninety five a piece, and raise the price in your VCRs by by two dollars to make up for it. Uh, do you have a recommendation to start better with singles, sealed, or lots? So, um, if you auction off lots of cards, they're going to sell. If you auction off sealed cards, those are going to sell. You can buy it now, sealed cards. They're going to sell. Um, obviously, those are in much more demand than than singles, but singles do sell as well. So. When you're selling sealed cards, you're, not, you're selling like the prospect of a huge hit, and that's very lucrative right now. Um, so if you want to sell things fast, sealed wax is better. If you want to get the most money out of it, right now, old singles, list them all individually because uh, unless they're very notable players or valuable sets, uh, selling in lots on auction is not generally the best way to do it because uh, what, what my opinion of that or what I think my theory is that um, there are not people who just like randomly collect all players. The kind of people who are playing a premium for cards, the way you want to sell it, they want specific players. Um, that kind of changes it as you get older, like 2004 tops, Chrome NFL cards, easy to sell in sets. Uh, but you know, those are again, very sought after. Mark says, just buy 20 by 16 by 8 boxes on eBay. You can do that too. Uh, Uline sells boxes. I am in, in Michigan, so I buy from the Detroit Box Company. Uh, but the price of cardboard is going up, and I assume it will continue to go up. So, uh, you know, just continue to keep that in mind. Um, don't, don't, don't worry about the cost of, of, of those kinds of things. Uh, or at least don't let that that stop you from um, buying them. The last thing you want to do is not list stuff because you don't want to spend two bucks in a box. That's a, that's a bad business strategy. Jero says I'm almost or Jero, I'm almost making the same amount of money as my job as a part time reseller. Give me some advice, Walt. How do you quit? Uh, I never quit my job in lieu of reselling. I, I was a reseller first. I was a reseller, then I had my own business. I, I've only worked like one corporate job, and that was like a contract job. It wasn't even like, you know, with the in, with, with the expectation that I was going to be there for a long time. Um, so I've always been an entrepreneur, self-employed person first. Um, and I just always made ends meet when I was younger. You know, it was always just learning how to hustle. I waste a lot of time trying to find boxes at home, so I prefer to have preset sizes, says Mark. Absolutely, I've got... Over there on my on the top shelf of my uh, warehouse, I've got um, you know, large, medium, and extra large Home Depot boxes. There's groups on Facebook called Buy Nothing. I usually get free boxes and bubble wrap there. They usually post free boxes and shipping supplies. Yeah, if you obviously if you can do that, do that as well. Um, you know, look behind big box stores and the recycling. They're gonna have boxes as well. Uh, let's see. That was a, a comment from Social Valencia. I, I always say her name wrong. I forget. 
I have a local listing on Facebook where people give away a crap ton of things. Oh, wow. Sounds good, says Brian. Yeah, Facebook is a great place to find free stuff. Um, you know, you can even go a bit beyond that. I've seen people get lots, loads of, of books for free. You can get tons of things for free. Sometimes they're called curb alerts. Um, you know, nothing wrong with selling stuff you got for free. A great way to start your business. Everyone always asks, like, what are the things I should buy to resell first? If you're in a position where you don't have a lot of money to invest, get free things. You know, sell the things around your house. Um, that really is a great way to start. So we have 82 people here, 28 thumbs up. Let's get some more thumbs up going. And if you're new, remember, uh, subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications to know when I go live. Generally, it's noon on Wednesdays, sometimes a bit later, but uh, always around lunchtime. Eastern time zone, that is. So pretty early for you West Coasters, right? 9.30? By the way, I have noticed a lot, a lot uh, increase of books to resell on Facebook. Do you think it's due to the Amazon change? Says Milo. I wouldn't doubt it. I don't know. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of people who have inventory that got returned to them uh, recently. Um, but uh, you know, it could be that. I don't know. What's a good rule of thumb for income I should have before I move out? So a good rule of thumb is you want to have at least six months of expenses saved up. So if you're going to live somewhere that's you know, uh, a thousand bucks a month, let's say, or two grand a month, you just double the numbers, it doesn't really matter. A thousand bucks a month, you, you, you need to have at least two grand for your, uh, for your move-in, your move-in, uh, what's it called? Security deposit. Uh, let's say you spend a thousand bucks on luxuries or, you know, just everything else, utilities, food. So you probably want to have at least $15,000 saved up um, before you move out. But there are a lot of people who do it with less than that. Um, more importantly, I think it's it's just good to do it. You know, Get yourself in a position where you need to hustle to make ends meet, and you'll find a way. Dara says, I have about 30, 35 used books to sell. Most of them only have a small profit margin on Amazon, but a high sales rank. What would you recommend? I would recommend throwing those away uh, if they have a high sales rank and they are worth a dollar. You could try eBay. Uh, there's no guarantee they're going to list. Um, it's very likely that it's going to take you, you know, an hour or two to list those books, and you will end up making no money on any of them, or you know, four bucks over the course of a year because only 10% sell. Uh, so I would not, I would not uh, recommend selling those if you don't have uh, faith in their ability to sell quickly and to bring you in at least, you know, five or ten bucks. Hustle, hard work, stocks, reselling in short term so I can enjoy my other pursuits in life and fund them. Uh, you know, I don't think stocks are a good short term way to make money. Um, that's very risky. If you have just been exposed to the market over the past two years, it might seem awesome to you, but I have personally lived through like two financial crises, uh, and I've seen people lose all of their money in the stock market, or I mean, you know, half of their half of their net worth. I've seen people uh, buy houses that are, you know, they're underwater in two years. So um, the way things are now is not indicative of how they'll be in the future necessarily, or uh, how they were in the past. We're kind of in a weird time right now, where there are a lot of people making speculative investments with money that they didn't really earn necessarily, and at least in terms of the way that we talk about earning money uh, as like providing value. Um, so it's uh, not to be an alarmist, but um, I think that personally I am very conservative right now when it comes to my investments and how I spend my money. Uh, but you know, that's just me. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a millionaire. I'm not, what's his name? Warren Buffett over here, or Jeff Bezos. Uh, do you have a preferred site you use to check your cards value? Are you a market movers or a card ladder guy? I just go off of what they sold recently on eBay at. Um, there's some football players I'm pricing higher, but I don't know enough about baseball or hockey or basketball really. Um, to like strategically price my, my players. Uh, so I'm just going off of market value. Is that NCA football 14 behind you on the table? It might be. 
No, it's 11. It's the Tim Tebow cover, but this game, I was checking it out, and it's got a crack in it. So I'm going to sell it on eBay. It still plays, but um, someone has to put some tape on there or something, otherwise it might explode in the uh, Xbox 360 machine. N NCA 11 sells for like 10 or 11 bucks. All the NCA games sell for more than their like Madden counterparts of the same year. Um, but NCA 11 is like NCA. For those of you who don't know, NCA 14 is like the cream of the crop. Sells for you know between 100 and 200 bucks. It's it's pretty insane. Um, but uh, every NCA football game is pretty well. They're making a new one, a new NCA football game. Uh, but it's not going to be out till probably the earliest 2023. So, you know. Question. Ever considered becoming a free hallway service for garage sales and estate sales? Any thought on that in general? So, uh, I do. I have thought about that. I have done cleanouts. You get a lot of shit and you have to have a way of getting through it fast. Because a lot of it is just garbage. It's not worth selling. Baron Von Diel says, how do you keep your items dust free? Or affected by dust. Uh, I don't have a dust problem in here. I don't know. Um, I put things in bags if they're expensive. Question, have you ever... Well, there we go. I meant high sales as an under... Oh, so I, okay. A low sales rank. Um, would that change your opinion? Still for a buck or two? I don't know. I mean, eBay, you know, put them at five bucks on eBay. Just take one picture. Don't take a lot of time uh, taking pictures. But I would not. I would not spend more than an hour, you know, to make thirty bucks. So funny, everyone looking around your warehouse. Yeah, people are nosy. People like to look and see what's going on. I don't know why, but they do. Uh, yep, nine thirty-one here. Just finished packaging yesterday. Sales, getting ready to list and edit the video. What sold? About eight hundred bucks in sales. More than half of that profit. Good. Work. Why does my YouTube say slow mode is on? Because you can't comment more than one comment per minute. I just tried that to see how it was. I don't think it's really making a big deal. Uh, is the opportunity cost of buying and holding a soon to retire Lego set a good way to make money? Depends how much money you have. Um, if you, you know, I would say it's probably a safer investment than, you know, a lot of stuff. I can't think of anything in particular, but it's like buying and holding sports cards. Uh, you generally are going to wait like a year sometimes, maybe even longer. Like I bought some Funko Pops from a retailer three years ago, from a wholesaler, I mean, no, two years ago. Uh, and um, they still are like being sold in stores or they're still not at a premium on eBay at least. So I don't know. Uh, where were we? How do you test video games? Do you have most of the consoles? I do have most of the consoles, but I don't test them. Uh, I'll test certain like old cartridge games, but for a disc game, I just refinish it if it's, if it's got scratches. Um, I've never had a disc that, that just doesn't play. That's, I'm sure it happens, but personally, I've never had a disc not play if it was in um, good condition. Asa Lamalikum, Walter. Uh, hello to you too, yo bro. How's it doing? So uh, where are you all from? Where's everyone at? Qu give me a quick shout out where you're at and um, you know, give the video a thumbs up and we'll talk some more about that. I'm curious what you guys are doing. We've got Springfield, Illinois, Southern New Jersey, Nashville, South Carolina, Erie, PA, Atlanta, Georgia.
Anacartes, Washington, St. Louis, Missouri, Los Angeles, the Cheese and Dairy State, Wisconsin, Virginia, and the Blue Ridge Mountains, Maryland. Cool to be with you here, Seth Rogen. Oh, yeah, that's funny. Bro, love your videos. Keep it up. Uh, Dara says, sorry to keep asking, but why eBay over Amazon for the books? It sounded like you didn't want to sell them on Amazon. I thought you said you didn't want to do that. Um, just FBA them if you don't want to. Uh, it really, you know, the amount of time that you're, you're worrying about this, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, you've only got, you know, what, 30 bucks, 40 bucks in profit on those, maybe a little bit more. Um, it's, j j you know, pick eBay, pick Amazon. It doesn't really matter. Just do it, you know? FBA those books and see what happens. Uh, now, keep in mind that on FBA, there's going to be a $1.80 media fee. And so they're going to have to, and there's also, if they're larger books, they're going to ship for more than, um, excuse me, like the lowest FBA rate. So potentially, a book that sells for $9 on Amazon might not be profitable. That might still be like losing money after all the fees, after the cost of FBA shipping. Um, so, you know, go through, uh, the, unfortunately, Profit Bandit and like Inventory Lab are not the most reliable for estimating shipping costs because sometimes the book dimensions and weight can be incorrect. Um, but if they're all like small paperback books that weigh under a pound, you can FBA those at, like eight bucks and make a dollar or two per book. If they're larger hardcover books that might weigh more than like two pounds, um, I, I'd probably say eBay because then you can focus on like using media mail and only paying, you know, what is it, $3 and like 16 cents. Uh, and there's no media referral fee. On average, how many hours go towards reselling a week, buying, listing, shipping? There is no average. Uh, it'll vary between like 10 hours and 30 hours probably. Um, but it depends what I want to do that week, really. I'm new to Amazon and I haven't said anything in yet. The one to three profit was based on the Amazon seller app. Yeah, um, you know, it's w without like knowing the exact titles, I can't tell you if they're going to be profitable or not, or if they're wrong or if it's right. Um, all you can really do is, is just do it and, and see what happens. Um, where were we? Add value by making a mystery book package by genre as well. I have seen people doing this on our books on Reddit, says Milo. Very cool. Have you made a video showing how to refinish DVDs, says Becca. I have made several videos, but long story short, you just put them in the machine and it fixes them. I have a Eco Pro, a ELM Eco Pro 2 here. Previously, I have used a... Uh, um, JFJ Easy Pro, that's a bit less precise in the way it fixes things. Uh, you're going to have more issues with discs being ruined, unfortunately. Um, but what you don't want to do is buy one of those cheap disc master, whatever you call them. Those do not work. The ones for like 30 bucks. The bare minimum you want to do is buy a JFJ Easy Pro. Those are about 150 on eBay right now. Uh, and I'd say for probably 99% of people who resell DVDs, more than you know 100, 100 a month like I do, um, you would want to, it's, it's worth it in my opinion to invest in an ELM Eco Pro 2. And they're like about 800 bucks on eBay right now. Uh, let's see. Nice shirt, says, uh, Logan. Thank you. Howdy from Flint, says Nick. Flint Town represent. What's a good rule of thumb profit margin per item at thrift stores and doing retail arbitrage? 5, 10, 20 bucks profit. So if you make at least $20 profit per item uh, and you have a thousand items listed and you sell 1% a day, you're gonna be making 200 bucks profit per day, assuming you're making that 1% sell through rate. That's about what, $70,000 a year, a little less than that, $65,000 a year. So I think for most people, if you can find items for 20 bucks, and you can build your eBay store up to a thousand items and just replace however many you sell a day, uh, that's gonna be a good sweet spot, but everyone has different you know, quantities and what they wanna work with. Tom says, if, you, if just starting, would selling cards through consignment site like COMC or Probstein be comparable to eBay listing for ROI? 
No, it would not be comparable. You'd make a lot less. Curious because your opinion because herd consignment comparable with eBay after fees. Um, you're going to be making more on eBay if you do buy it now. Uh, and if you go through and price your cards like they price them. Uh, Probstein does mostly auctions, if I am correct. COMC uh, does mostly buy it now. But with COMC, on a lot of low-value cards, there are fees that are going to make it not really worthwhile to sell them on there. And the high-value cards, if you've got thousands of high-value cards, different story. But if you've got you know 15 or even 100 cards that sell for more than 50 bucks, um, it's worth it, worth doing the research yourself and listing them yourself. Uh, do you test your DVDs or is it rare to have ones that don't work? Asks Denise. If they are in fine condition, if they have scratches on them, then I refinish them. If they look fine, I don't test them, I just sell them. Thrifting in the 219. Northwest Indiana. Laporte, Lake, Porter, Newton, and Jasper counties, Chicago Metro. Nice, Derision Flipper. Hope you're doing good, man. Over a hundred people in the chat, give it a big thumbs up. Let's get over a hundred thumbs up. That'd be nice. We only need 42 more thumbs up. And if you're feeling generous, remember, Super Chats, get this bell rung. Smack for the hammer. For one dollar, those might go to a local bookstore as well, says Brian. Not every used bookstore buys cash. Not every buys books even. I've seen a lot of them that do uh, in-store credit. But then the flip side is you can take that in-store credit and buy one valuable book and sell that one book. And your profit is the same, but your time worked is far less. Far, far less. So let's talk about... Um, let's talk about some bolos I've been seeing right now. We've got 100 people here, let's talk about some bolos. Bolo stands for be on the lookout for. So what kind of stuff is selling fast? Now obviously sports cards are selling fast. Hey, we got five bucks from Secret of Wanderlust. Thanks again for the motivation. Well, thank you for the five bucks. And here is a... Uh, I'm seeing increase increases in Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Dragon Ball Z cards as well. Now the very high end, like you know, twenty-five thousand dollar basketball cards, those do appear to be going down in value. Uh, but the velocity and the sales of like new uh, mega boxes or new, you know, new, new sealed cards is still uh, going pretty good. Um, you can still make a lot of money if you get lucky, lucky and go to a Walmart or go to like Target.com and buy some. I have to get some water. I'll be back in like a minute. I'm just so thirsty. It's so hot in here right now. Okay, we're back. Oh, five bucks from Miss Valencia. Thank you very much. And you know what? For that, we do this. <laughs> hit that like button, says Tom. Yeah, hit that like button. Hit that like button. Smack it. Just, just punch your phone or punch your, your computer or whatever it is. But what do you guys want to know about? Some more bolos. Um, I, you know, I've been seeing. Uh, oh, there's a, what is this? Chat is a, a citrus chapstick. Oh, I forget what the chapstick even was. I saw this. It was selling at a, a, a CVS for two sixty nine, and on eBay it was selling for twenty one dollars. Oh man, I wonder if I can find it on eBay. You know, little things like that, like it's a, a citrus, it's the brand chapstick. So generally, um, with that kind of stuff, you have to be a branded item. 
Uh, I also saw that uh, Poison Ivy, Burt's Bees, Poison Ivy Soap. The little tiny, like, four ounce bars sell for like $60. That's how bad Poison Ivy is. People are willing to pay a lot of money, <laughs> a lot of money, um, to, to have a little bit of relief. Let's see, where were we? I'm just going to type in chapstick on eBay, go to sold listings and uh, sort by highest. So it looks like we've got Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End Chapstick sold for $60 plus shipping. Good God. Chapstick Sun Defense SPF 25 and 8 pack sold for $48. A 3 pack of Velvet Cupcake Chapstick sold for $40 on May 23rd. This really is remarkable. Uh, let's see, Chapstick True, Chapstick True Shimmer Tropical Flavor, one one single one sold for twenty two forty nine plus priority shipping. Wow! If you do clothes, Johnny Was the Sun becomes here our bolos. Tie dye and swimsuits are also moving, which I know isn't the best tip. Yeah, you know people making their own like thrashed bleach tie dye T shirts. Those have been popular for a few months now, uh, and like the cutoff version of those are selling right now as well. What is? What do you guys think is the most expensive sunscreen for retail arbitrage? <coughs> Excuse me. We're just gonna sort by highest, <laughs> my highest price. Ban de Soleil Orange Jelly SPF four. Sold for 300 bucks. Holy shit. That isn't the kind of stuff we're going to see at the store, though, I don't think. Ban Soleil. B-A-I-N-D-E-S-O-L-E-I-E-L. -E 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 that is a brand, holy shit, to look out for. This is, this is news to me. I'm going to put it in the chat. Look out for that. I've seen people buy crease protectors for shoes for 35 pence each and then sell them for four bucks a piece. Oh yeah, you can, I mean, dollar store stuff or cheaper works. Uh, why are those chapsticks so expensive? Are they discontinued? Yes, they are discontinued. You got it. Let's see, so what, the, the, these Bain de Soleil products sell for way too much. I don't know where are those even I don't even know what kind of stores sell those. I don't know if they are only sold. Well, here we go. Rite Aid. Wow. <laughs> I was wrong. I thought they were like some insane luxury product. So this Bain de Soleil sunscreen used to sell for $9 at Rite Aid. No idea when, but it's on the website. And, uh... That's just insane to me. It looks like it looks like it was available until four, four, uh, you know, until the end of, of 2020. Man, this is crazy. So, but let, let's look in the 50 to 75 dollar range for retail arbitrage stuff for sunscreen. I'm just looking on eBay, and I'm just going to read you off what I see. Uh, obviously, these are all new. Let's let's even go. You know, there's there's are there any used items? Because if it's used. That really means it's valuable because someone's paying for an open sunscreen bottle. We've got um, Le Mer Broad Spectrum SP SPF 50 selling for $75. We've got a lot of nine Australian gold rapid tanning intensifier for 70 bucks. Probably isn't that good of a deal. Uh, we've got, again, Bain de Soleil. Is, is, uh, that's a name you should look out for. B A N I. D E S O L E I L. Holy crap! That's a great. That's a great brand. I, I mean, you know what? I'm gonna start making bolo lists because that blows my mind. So we've got 150 people here. Everyone, give it a big thumbs up. And any questions you have, I'd love to answer them, even if they're expired. Someone asks. Yes, you can sell this stuff even if it's expired. You can't sell expired food, I don't believe. But you can sell expired, uh, as far as I know, if I'm wrong, correct me, I could be wrong, but you can sell expired stuff for sure. What's the best thing to resell? Asks Jack123. Well, as of as of right now, 
Bain de Soleil. It's pretty good to resell. That's going for, you know, massive, massive profits. I posted a link there so you guys can see what it actually looks like and proof that it sells for nine bucks in stores and 75 bucks on eBay. Why are people wanting to buy sunscreen for that much? They, I don't know why. I have no clue why it makes their skin look good. No clue. It must be, it mu they like, they must like the results it provides. Aaron Franklin says, there was a huge recall on sunscreen recently. FDA to recall 40 different lots of sun products from 10 different brands because of benzene, a known carcinogen, was found in the formulas. Well, 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 there we go. Um, I, I, I didn't think eBay allowed you to sell that kind of stuff if there was a recall, uh, but it appears that they are letting people do it. So I don't know if there's benzene. I'll look it up right now. Benzene. Uh, Bain de Soleil. So, wow. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. You know, I'm not seeing any recall notifications. I am just seeing that it's discontinued. So, there's a petition for it. Okay, so actually, I can, I can go back and read the change.org petition. So, apparently, they stopped doing this in December 2019. So where where the heck do you find sunscreen that's expired that has uh, been discontinued two years ago? You know, a year and a half ago. So the two things that I check for retail arbitrage, uh, I, for old things like that, I will go to Rite Aids in like smaller towns, but go to like tourist areas and gas stations that have general stores. Go in there, look on the bottom shelf, Ask the person working behind the counter if they have back stock because those little general stores, those gas station whatever, in more rural touristy areas, they are not, t you know, they're going to have stuff from 10 years ago, ago sometimes. And that's where you're going to find your retail arbitrage, you know, the gold. I've sold expired Butterfingers on eBay before since they changed the ingredients. People love the old formula, says the flipping accountant. You know, people will buy it, they don't care, but I think technically, I think technically it's against the rules. So I'm going to read you off eBay's food policy. This is from ebay.com. Uh, the following uh, and similar food items are not allowed. So you can't sell these things at all. Unpasteurized dairy products except cheese that follows government guidelines unpasteurized fruit or vegetable juice, wild mushrooms with the exception of morel and shiitake mushrooms, ackee fruit or seeds. I wonder why that is. I've never even heard of ackee fruit. Expired food. You can't sell expired food. Although people definitely do, and I don't think it's a bad thing. Government assistant benefits that can be used for food, so no selling bridge cards. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. When listing food items that are allowed, you must clearly state the expiration date, state how perishable items will be delivered, and ensure the food items are uh, stored and, uh, and safely. No, I do not mean acai. I mean ackee. It's, uh, let's see. A Jamaican fruit, the soapberry family, such as lychee and longan. They are native to tropical West Africa. Um, I don't know why. Toxicity. Maybe, I, I, I don't know. I have no clue why you can't sell those. Maybe it's a rule about health risk. Maybe it's about, uh, you know, foreign pathogens. I don't know. But um, interesting, interesting nonetheless, right? Sold discontinued scent. This is Punch's Resales. Sold discontinued scent of Swifter pads on Amazon for 50 bucks each. Paid two bucks. Got over 100 from a scratch dent store. Punch is resale. That's a pretty good flip, my friend. If I buy an item new at Walmart, can I list the product as a new condition on uh, FBA or am I risking Amazon asking for an invoice? So that is not a valid question. You can both list it and risk being asked for an invoice. 
right? They don't ask for an invoice for everything you list is new. Anything you list, um, it's, uh, you know, there's always that risk. Acai, very good for your health. So this is not acai. It's, it's spelled A-C-K-E-E. -E. It's an entirely different thing, not acai. We've got Beatrice in Mustang, Oklahoma here. Yeah, so when you're selling things new on Amazon, there is always going to be a risk that even if you have invoices, the manufacturer could still say it's fake. It happens all the time. You're playing by someone else's rules. So don't be so worried about getting your account banned if you're not using it. Now, do I sell, do I do any retail arbitrage on Amazon? Only with seasonal products. I'm not doing just like, you know, bread and butter stuff because I sell so many used things in gated brands that that risk is not worth it for me. There are tens of thousands of people who make a lot of money doing exactly that. And they know that there's, there's, a, there's a risk to it, right? There's a risk, but they don't care. They just don't care. So it's up to you, really. Weird Fruit Explorer on YouTube, love that guy's channel, talks about that fruit, check it out, pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I am very curious as to why they specifically do not allow that on Amazon. Do you not recommend drop shipping? I do not. I think that there are circumstances where it's good. Um, you know, if you're... If you literally have no money and can't hold inventory, it's going to work for you. If you're in a different country and you're trying to capitalize in American markets, that's, that's fine. But if you have any ability at all to hold inventory, I think it makes more sense. Secrets of Wanderlust says it's banned by the FDA. Well, that explains it. But then I, I would think they would just say nothing banned by nothing that's banned by the FDA you can sell. Okay, here we go. Case report. Aki fruit poisoning in eight siblings from a NIH study. So that probably that probably explains that you can't sell poison on on eBay. But it is it appears to be something used in food production globally. So you know, but that, that's the way things are. There's so many things, food laws you can't sell in Europe, for example. Like they've got much more strict uh, regulations about food dye. Uh, and artificial coloring in continental Europe over the United States. So there, there's different, um, they make different um, recipes for certain foods. So uh, that, you know, the more you know, right? So is it better to have a niche business or sell anything and everything? Uh, I'd say it's better to do what makes you money. There are some people who prefer a niche business. There are some people who prefer to just be generalists. Uh, there's not a right way of doing it. It really depends on your personal persuasions and interests. I did drop shipping 15 to 18 years ago on eBay, but finding good drop shipping companies is few and far between. Yeah, it's just not, I don't think for the vast majority of people it's worth their time to pursue. Sometimes it has to do with importing the fruit too. Like people can't ship certain plants to places like fruit trees, says LL. Yep, it's either part of the fruit or a certain quantity uh, becomes toxic when consumed. Yeah, it's uh, eight siblings. If, if I can ever load this article, uh, we'll, we'll know, I guess. Lego likes to send counterfeit claims for RA stuff, says Dana Invests. They do. Uh, there's been a, a, a nightmare with um, Allbirds on eBay as well. I don't know if you have been following that. But Allbirds has just joined the Vero program. And they sent out what appears to be hundreds, maybe even thousands of Vero complaints. Which is ironic because they're all about saving the environment. Blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, they're making it impossible to sell used shoes of theirs on eBay. It's, um, you know, kind of a PR snafu on their part. I don't sell shoes, really. I don't like doing it that much. Uh, but there are a lot of people, because I, I think that they were a pretty decent, you know, 40 buck profit guarantee. People love Allbirds. 
Uh, but that's, you know, if you invest, it's it's kind of ironic, right? It's kind of ironic because of, of the branding uh, that they chose to pursue. But at the end of the day, they have a bottom line they have to make, you know? Albert? No, Allbirds. A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S. Allbirds. Yeah, you figure they'd all be about reuse. You, you figure that, but... Uh, I am not one who believes um, grand overtures of moral superiority from, from corporations. I, uh, <laughs> I just don't believe them ever. I don't think that corporations care about issues like that. I think that a, a, a small business might with a single owner, you know, with a very strong uh, management, uh, you know, leadership, um, but, uh, I just don't believe that any of these things, these, the, what's it called, uh, vir the virtue signaling that we see from corporations, I just don't buy it. I don't think it's, like, bad. I'm not, like, upset by it. I just don't believe it. What are your thoughts on Etsy buying to pop? What do you think the impact will be? So, that's tough. Right, the reason Etsy's buying to pop is because they want access to that younger market. So does that mean that they're gonna change Etsy to accommodate this younger market more and more? Or are they just buying them to have in their portfolio of you know assets? I would probably say the latter. Uh, the people at Etsy are pretty smart. Um, they, uh, they're not, I, it's a very successful company, despite being not like the biggest marketplace. I think that the way they run it is a lot more strategic than how like eBay was five years ago. eBay has made some great changes recently. Um, so I would tend to believe that Etsy is going to keep to pop separate. Maybe they're going to use some of their proprietary um, like information, uh, the way items are, are displayed, or, or like the back end for a mobile Etsy app. I don't know. Um, but I, I really doubt that they're going to merge the two in the way that we, uh, like, so, see, like, a telecom company merge together. Um, or something like that, where the company that was acquired just, like, blinks out of existence. I could be wrong, but I don't know. Jackie H. says, Hi, Blake. At what point should one get an LLC for a business for reselling? I'm new and only have a few sales on Mercari. You can do it for about 150 bucks on LegalZoom.com. Um, I would say do it sooner than later. There's no reason not to have one unless you really can't afford it. So if you've got an extra couple hundred bucks laying around, um, I would say do it then. And that should be occurring pretty early on in your business's life cycle. But it is not mandatory uh, when you're just starting off. Amazon just regated me out of the blue in Lee last week after I sent 10 pairs of jeans three weeks ago to FBA, so I had to pull them all out. It says Stacy, yeah, Amazon's been doing some weird stuff about gating over the past like month and a half, I'd say. A lot of people are finding that they've either been regated or uh, what was open is now gated. Um, and this is typically in, um, these, these are brand gates, not um, category gates. So it's, uh, we're, we, I don't know. I, I don't, it's so, it's so hard to tell what Amazon is doing because they have so many different categories of the company and so many different, um, that, that doesn't work in unison. You know, they're all, it's a very decentralized process. So you, we just don't know. Uh, the flipping accountant with Drew, his comment. Dana says they care about the environment unless it affects their profit in the long run. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know that company very well. Uh, I only can talk about what I've seen. And what I've seen uh, does not inspire, inspire me to believe them. <laughs> but, what, you know, what do I know? I'm a skeptic by nature. Angelo says, established business is required to sell on Walmart's online, I believe. Uh, business license. Yeah, uh, I don't recall Walmart.com's rules. Um, I have not yet ventured into Target Plus and Walmart, whatever the hell they're called. Um, I probably will, this Q4. 
I think I'm going to do some more wholesaling. Um, but I don't know. Even just mentioning that, I was going to, you know, I have to, fi I have to figure out a new 3PL then. I was going to use Amazon MFC to, uh, do the, um, the fulfillment, but they just changed their rules. So I don't know what I'm going to do now. Where were we? Listing off on the side, so not following chat 100%. Oh, okay, you're just talking. Yeah, uh, so who do we have in the chat? We have Dana, Angelo, Jack, Dara, Jackie, the flipping accountant, Brian, LL, Miss Valencia, John Platter in Redford, Michigan. Where are you all at? You, let's go over some more interesting bolos. How much do you guys, so we, we know that inflatable pools are big bolos. We've gone over a few sunscreens. We've gone over some chapsticks. What do you think the most expensive deodorant is? We're going to go over deodorant right now. Um, discontinued Old Spice Desperado Scent System, a four pack, a hundred bucks, including shipping. Good God. Arid, extra dry cream, antiperspirant, deodorant, creamy, not dried. Discontinued sells for $75 plus shipping. Probably costs four bucks to buy. Lot of five acts, Lil Yachty, gold deodorant, body spray, four ounces. These are selling for about, about uh, let's see, 12 bucks a piece. Sold them in a lot of five. They got 70 bucks plus shipping. Native deodorant, candy cane scent, 0.35 ounce travel size, lot of 57 sold for 75 bucks. So that was not, I would say, a bolo per item. But you can sell these things in bulk. I wouldn't doubt that was a trash haul, you know, to be totally honest. And we got five bucks from Brian. Brian, thank you very much because myself and others have always appreciated your content. Well, thank you, Brian. What are the best things to buy at Goodwill? Uh, I prefer electronics. Uh, some folks do shoes and clothing. Some folks do books. You know, really, there, there's going to be gold wherever you look. We've got Lucas Figueiredo. Is that right? Listening from Brazil. Moving to Canada soon, eh? Plan to make some extra cash there by flipping Lucas. Awesome to hear, man. Uh, sh I don't know. Well, so you're in Brazil, so this is not going to be a surprise to you, I guess. Uh, but uh, when you watch people who flip in America, our cost of shipping is about half, in a lot of cases, what the cost of shipping is in Canada. Um, it just costs more up there. I recently put a pair of Crocs in a Levi's wallet within 12 hours of listing. A quick 40 bucks, says John. So yeah, brands like Croc and Levi, they are they're good. They're very good. We've got uh, Burt's Bees 2-pack outdoor deodorant with sage. Four ounces sold for $75. Wow. Old Burt's Bees stuff, man. Check out old Burt's Bees stuff. If you're out, let's say you're going on vacation this summer. You go somewhere uh, and you go to an old, old general store. I'd look out for Burt's Bees. Blake, do you mess with electronics when you were young like me? Now we do it for work. You know what? I didn't actually. I literally uh, soldiered my first item ever yesterday. I bought one of these on Amazon for like 10 bucks a few years ago. A little soldiering iron. And uh, I had a um, casino plug and play TV game that I sold for 75 bucks. And I went to test it and it wouldn't turn on. And this is was news to me because I test all my stuff. It worked, but something had occurred over the past, I bet it had been on the shelf for eight months, that caused it to not work. I opened it up and the black battery line had, had come off of the, um, the contact point. So I just got this thing out <coughs> and I re-soldered it. <coughs> re it. And now it works. I mean, you know, you know, that's how you learn stuff, right? 
What are your predictions for good sales this holiday season, like Halloween and Christmas? I think we're gonna have a toy shortage. I really do. Dang, my phone dies in the middle of the list you were giving, says Dara. Where do I get your bolos? So I'm gonna se start selling bolo lists. I'm gonna, it's gonna be, how much? Okay, yeah, you know what? Let's do this from what you want, right? Why am I dictating the price? What do you think is a reasonable cost for, let's say 10 leads a week. And yeah, 10 leads a week of stuff that sells, oh boy, cause that's where it gets tough, right? What I don't wanna do and what I've seen some people do is they sell bolo lists and it's like the sales rank on Amazon is like 700,000 in home and gardening. And um, <clears throat> you know, you make two bucks on there. So it has to be like, l l let's say, Retail arbitrage, like new slash discontinued. That would be good. That'd be good. But how much is that worth? Hmm. I haven't thought about it. JC Tube, where'd you get that Mando t-shirt? From my loving girlfriend. Uh, she bought it at Target for me. <laughs> All my clothes come from my girlfriend buying them at Target or me buying them at thrift stores. Uh, let's see, where do I, let's see, uh, do you have a website? I do, wbkultra.com, but I've been slacking, slacking on it. Probably a dumb newbie question. It's okay, I'll answer it. I'm here to help! Can I combine new items and used in the same FBA shipment? Yes, you can. For example, 10 used books and some new deodorant. You absolutely can. Just make sure that everything is packaged fine because you don't want that deodorant melting or something onto your books because then it's all it's all thrown away. Ten percent of the average profit per item on the list, LOL. That is not a bad strategy saying, okay, here's how much you could make. Because like, I, I have I've subscribed to Bolo Lists and the way it works is you don't hardly get any of them because they sell out so fast, like the items on the lists. But if you do, you make like $1,000. So it's a very like boomer bust way of doing it. It depends how much of it is easy to find, saturation. I'd be a Patreon supporter for weekly Bolos versus an email list, but that might just be me. Depends how easy it is to acquire the items or if you include where to get the items, that'd be worth a lot. Yeah, that would be worth a lot. Uh, would depend also how many are buying the Bolo list. I would not want to buy one that's flooded. Here is a potential money maker for aspiring entrepreneurs, a dating site focused on resellers. Would be mostly men, but that's nothing new. <laughs> that's funny, Brian. How do you ship shoes without the original box? Priority in a bubble mailer? I think that a that priority mail box, they, they have a shoe box size. Um, but yeah, just bubble wrap it, yeah. Uh, that percent idea would be good too, to, be, to see if the price is higher than the average, they'll get FOMO. Uh, <laughs> Free 99 for about 350. Yeah. I agree with you guys that it should be limited. <clears throat> I definitely agree with that. The Bolo group I'm a part of requires at least a sales rank of 150000 and a $5 profit. But that's dumb because 150000 in books is very good. Is good. 150000 in video games is, is not ever going to sell. So it's kind of like, that's a difficult, you'd have to go through each category and say like top 1% only. Um, that'd be tough though, but these are all good ideas. <clears throat> yeah, Brian, they're either men or married housewives. Pretty bad pool of dating potential. <laughs> yeah, you don't get into reselling to, uh, to, to meet your future wife or husband, I guess. Maybe you do, I don't know. <clears throat> I didn't. I got into this to make money. We have 125 here, 103 thumbs up. Let's get those thumbs up more 
And, uh, you know, I can go over more bolos if you want me to. I can just keep reading off stuff. Or if you have specific questions, I would love to answer any specific questions you have. I can talk about a lot of things pertaining to how to make money on the internet. Deodorant wipes. Any of those sell for a lot of money? Doesn't look like it. Let's look up Old Spice. Old Spice products. What is, hey, we got five bucks from David R. David, thank you very much. And for that, we give one of these. That's how it's done here in the warehouse. <clears throat> so if you want to do retail arbitrage, I think we're gonna focus on the small, easy to ship items. I'm just gonna look up Burt's Bees because Burt's Bees, I got a good feeling about that. With a minimum of, uh, we'll say minimum 50 bucks because, well, why not? Um, someone sold 552 tinted red lip balms for $1,200 on April 4th. Wow. 300 Burt's Bees, the, you know, uh, man, Burt's Bees is a crazy industry. Three Burt's Bees Garden Tomato Toner, eight ounces a piece, on May 27th, sold for $229. That's Burt's Bees Garden Tomato Toner. Holy shit. Burt's Bees Lip Shimmer Toffee Sealed Hard to Find 4-Pack, $120. Good God. Blake, do you go to thrift stores and garage sales as a kid? Oh yeah, all the time. I still do as an adult. What do you think of the business model similar to Mr. Buys a Lot, i.e. sourcing bulk quality merchants and selling it to other resellers in large lots? You know, I've done that. Um, it's not fun for me. It's a way to make money. You're just, you know, basically running a logistics business. Um, but nothing wrong with that. Wow. Let's all go to Lowe's Clearance for Burt's Bees. What I think that I've said, I said it earlier in the chat, I really do think that you're going to have a lot of luck at like tourist destinations with that kind of stuff. Sylvia says, got ungated in Nike, now scared to buy and get counterfeit claim. What's a safe place to source them? Uh, you know, you're really not going to be protected against that, unfortunately, in Nike. If they want to turn you in or they want to accuse you, rather, they're going to accuse you. Andres from uh, Argentina gives it a thumb up. Well, thank you from Argentina, my Argentine friend. What else do we have for Burt's Bees? What are some other Burt's Bees? The tomato cologne just really sells for a shit ton of money. Uh, Burt's Bees deodorant. All natural herb insect repellent. Those go for about 20 bucks a piece, looks like. Amazing, amazing. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, Burt's Bees clothing. I don't think Burt's Bees sells clothing. I think they just sell, like, uh, beauty products. Yeah, no no Burt's Bees, no Burt's Bees clothing looks like. I saw someone selling an entire pallet of an open Hallmark cards. 300 bucks what they wanted, but I didn't have a good feeling about it. I think I saw one of those on auction in Grand Rapids. Um, yeah, with that kind of stuff... You know, it's going to be a quantity listing, if you're lucky. I, could you imagine listing 10,000 different cards? Oh, terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. The other problem with Nike is the pictures for listings just disappear. Yeah, you know, it's uh, Nike is not something that I sell on Amazon just because of all the reasons that you have gone over. Um, I am ungated for them. I can sell Nike. But there's just so many risks associated with it that I don't think I would. Uh, what niche isn't really being used that you feel will get big in the near future? Christian Maine, thanks. So, seasonal stuff is a safe bet. Um, that's going to be cyclical, obviously. So, 
I think that like uh, Halloween costumes and that kind of stuff will get big, but there's going to be more competition for it, right? Um, in terms of like trends, I excuse me, I think that um, in terms of collectibles, I think that Dragon Ball Z collectibles are going to be going up. Um, in terms of uh, just like niches, used car parts, I would say are going to are, are going up right now. Used car accessories, uh, car DIY stuff. I think DIY stuff in general is going to be good. Um, stuff that is imported is going to be more expensive in the near future because it costs like ten grand for a container. That's like four thousand dollars or four times what it usually costs. Um, you know, we're going to be seeing people get back doing more outside stuff, more like group activities. So I bet that there's going to be tailgating supplies are going to be big this fall, I bet. Um, calculators, as everyone goes back to school, more in-person classes, those are going to be back up. Um, building supplies, since costs are going up. So alternative building supplies, absolutely, for sure. Uh, you know, spray foam kits, stuff like that. I'm sure that's really going up right now. Any lesser known platforms for sellers you will think do well in the future? No, I would say stick to the big ones, stick to eBay, stick to Amazon. That's where the majority of money goes through. Uh, and you'd be wise just to get good at those as opposed to trying to find the next big thing because there's not really a lot of benefit to being an established seller. Um, you know, once you get beyond like one or two years. Krista says, Burt's Bees sells baby clothing. Yeah, it looks like they do. It looks like someone sold a lot, uh, 70 pieces of newborn clothing, zero to three month Burt's Bees outfits for about a dollar a piece. So you can either sell 70 sets of, uh, of kids clothing, or you can sell one eight ounce can of tomato cologne. It's up to you. Craig says, if you do FBM, which is just you ship it out yourself, instead of FBA, do you have to put Amazon labels on your items? No, you do not. Been selling for years, getting ready to leave my job and go full time. What do you do for health insurance? I'm here in Michigan. So currently, I am on my girlfriend's health plan. So I just give her like 300 bucks a month. Uh, and then she has that money taken out of her paycheck because it's through her employer. But before that, I just did the healthcare.gov marketplace and I paid again about 300 bucks a month. It sucks. I don't want to have health insurance. I have not used it, but uh, you know, be because of the way things are, you have to have it. Purple Rube, five bucks. Thank you very much, Purple Rube. Really appreciate that. We are up to, I think, $30. Wow, 30 bucks. So if we get 20 more bucks, uh, we're actually going to bring out the money bugle. Man alive. This thing hasn't been used in about a year, it feels like. <coughs> Excuse me. Three things that must be done and three things that don't have to be done in this business. Uh, I personally don't think you have to itemize every single sale. I think for accounting, you can just do money in, money out. You're totally going to be fine. Uh, I do not think that you have to uh, buy a thermal printer. I think if you're doing under 100 sales a month, an inkjet printer is totally fine. And I think that you don't have to always be at thrift stores or garage sales at 9 a.m. You can go to these at any time of the day. And if you have strong niche knowledge or just a strong general knowledge, uh, you can find things that sell. Now, th three things that you must do. Although you don't have to itemize your stuff, you really do have to keep track of how much money you make every month. Um, I think that that's an absolutely unnegotiable thing. Um, you have to make sure your items always work, and you have to make sure that uh, you you know you have a, uh, an adequate storage system that keeps them safe and keeps them easy to find. Um, it might look like a mess in here to you, <clears throat> but I have never lost an item. <laughs> so it's um, it really is tough to keep track of things once you have over like a thousand listings. But uh, what I use is I have things itemized uh, alphabetically. If it's a book or a DVD or a sports card, I have them itemized in bins by category. 
And for my bulk quantity, like when I've you know got a couple hundred rings for sale, I have all my jewelry on its own individual spreadsheet. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Not to sound like a nag, but just think of healthcare as you pay as an investment in yourself, says Ed. So I didn't want to have it in my 20s, but I had to. I never went to the doctor. I, I knew I wasn't going to need it. So I don't I don't think that's an investment. I think it's uh I think it's a subsidy that I pay to help people who have much bigger problems than me and it's one that's forced upon me. What do you think of farming mealworms and selling them? eBay comps look tempting. Hell no. <laughs> I don't want to do that. You can, but it sounds gross and sounds hard too because you have to have everything temperature controlled, I bet. Dara says, I thought you couldn't sell living things on eBay. Let's read off the policy. Things on eBay. Uh, <clears throat> policy. Live animal policy. So this is from eBay.com, right off the website. Sellers can only list the following live animals. So here's the list of things that you can sell on eBay that are alive. Bees, crickets, ladybugs, domestic aquatic snails, fertilized eggs, live bait, minnows, earthworms, shiners, mealworms, lobsters, mice as food, stud services. So that's like you have a mating thing or whatever. Uh, you like you you have like your male horse or dog uh, inseminate other animals of the same species. <laughs> Tadpoles, tropical fish, pets, and other live animals not included in the list above are not allowed. So that's an exhaustive list. Interesting. Mealworms are stupid easy to grow. Put them in a tote with some oatmeal. And give them some scraps here and there. No heat or lights. But I wonder, when you ship them, do they have to ship with like an ice cube? Because I don't know the temperature that they can is exist in. But I know that, I mean, if it's in the back of a UPS truck and they arrive dead, you're going to have to refund them. <clears throat> the person who bought them. Any thoughts on up-and-coming niche areas for new sellers? Also, lesser-known platforms. Uh, I went over that about 15 minutes ago. I have FBA toys in good ranking, but Amazon sells lower than my wholesale cost. What should I do? Says Happy 2020. So, you have two options. You can sell them somewhere else. eBay, your own website, Facebook Marketplace, and use Amazon MCF. That stands for multi-channel fulfillment to ship them out. Uh, and you're not going to pay necessarily the same fees as you would on Amazon. Or what you can do is you can price at whatever price you want to price them at and wait for Amazon to run out of stock. Those are pretty much your two options uh, unless you want to just sell them at a loss. Uh, let's see. We've got another comment from Lynx off the cuff. You could theoretically just do the worms during spring and fall, so you don't have to worry about temperature control as much. Yeah, you could definitely do that. Uh, treat them like meltable. Most breeders don't like to ship small quantities in summer, has been my experience, says Secrets of Wanderlust reselling. Let's see how much mealworms go for right now on eBay. I'm just going to type in mealworms. Um, I have no clue. Wow. 5,000 giant mealworms, alive, sells for 150 bucks free shipping. Yikes. How would you be selling in future on eBay or Amazon with the 600 limit or tax form 1099? So uh, I make a hell of a lot more than 600 bucks from those websites. So I've been paying taxes on my eBay and Amazon sales, you know, for the better part of the last decade. Um, so it's not going to affect me. And for most people, it's not really going to affect them. There are some people 
who are going to limit themselves uh, to you know local transactions. But the vast majority of online full-time sellers or part-time sellers are doing enough transactions or enough cash where they're already paying taxes. And certain states like Massachusetts and Illinois have already had these lower limits in place. I think it's dumb, personally. I don't think that we should be taxing small businesses like that. But um, the government loves to uh, offset the cost of its programs onto private citizens. And uh, that's how things work in America in 2021. Hope you like inflation. Zachary Gates says, you're awesome, Blake. Thanks. How many people do you know? This is something that really pisses me off. And like, listen, I get it. If you do this, if you do this, whatever, everyone has their own issues, their own hustles, their own monetary, you know, restrictions. But I know people who use, who got PPP loans, forgivable PPP loans, and use that as the down payment on a house. What the shit? That's why, you know, that isn't the only reason why houses cost so much and we're seeing real estate skyrocket and all that bullshit. But that's certainly not helping when the government just gives you money. It's going to make things cost more. And it's screwing it over for everybody else. Dara says, what's the lower limit in Illinois? I believe Illinois has a $600... Uh, limit on 1099s. If you live in the state of Illinois. Uh, let's see. I live in, so here, yeah, here's the states that have different 1099 reporting requirements. Illinois is $1,000 in gross payment volume from sales of good in a single calendar year with at least three processed. And Vermont, Massachusetts, Virginia, and Maryland are $600 in gross payment volumes from the sales of goods in a single calendar year, regardless of the number of transactions. That's the government just clawing away more of your money. PPP is not forgiving if that's what you use it on, says Leg. Well, they say it's payroll. But then they use that money for a house. You know, it's, it's, you know, creative accounting is what it is. Yeah, you prove you spend it on payroll, but you, your wife, and your two kids are the people on payroll, and you keep the money. I mean, it's not, it's not hard to figure out how people are doing this. It's, uh, that's the thing about the government giving away money is there are always going to be people who uh, skirt the rules. Yeah, I think it's bullshit. I think it's, you know... Whatever, not going to call any individuals out, but as a government policy, to give away money for any reasons I think is dumb. How have your sales been affected post-COVID? I have been hearing several online sellers are starting to see a slowdown in sales. Summer's always slower. Um, You know, I've definitely seen a slowdown in sales, but I've also been working less, so it's hard for me to say what what it's from. Craig Winans or Winans, Winians, Winans says, I've shipped guppies at Small Fish, styrofoam line box, either 72 hour heat packs or those blue ice things from the 99 cent store, depending on, de- de- depending on destination temps. Most times you don't even need those. Well, thank you for the information, Craig. Christy says, Thank you for the question answers. Love your suggestions. Also, sorry, I repeated them a few times. No worries, there's a lag on the chat. It's totally fine. Pack the Man says, Do you think selling Amazon FBA, you can do some crazy profit numbers? I refuse to sell on eBay anymore after getting screwed by eBay so much. Absolutely, you can make crazy money on eBay too. Uh, What I really would try to discourage sellers from doing is writing off any platform because of anecdotal experiences. If you get screwed over 10 times a year on eBay to the tune of $1,000, but you're still making 90 grand, like that's, you know, the math doesn't add up. Don't take things personal. It's, it's just business. It's just business. That's all, all I can say to you. 
All right, so we have uh, 135 people in the chat. We are at an hour and a half. We can keep going strong if you guys want to, or I can uh, I can get off here and see you next week. Um, you know, what I'd be doing basically for the remainder of the video, because I'm out of things to talk about, is uh, is doing, you know, just talking about bolos on eBay or answering questions that you guys have. Uh, because all the things I had planned for this video, I have gone through and talked about. Uh, we got a lot of folks here in the chat, so I think that, uh, hey, all right. Purple Rube, 20 bucks, says blow the horn. Pretty gross, but we'll still do it anyways. All right, so uh, if you're wearing, if you're wearing headphones, cover your ears. Cover your ears, it's gonna be loud. And there we go, a brief bugle. An or an, an auditory ray of hope. What you need to get yourself going. And there we go. I'm gonna end on that <laughs> that one right there. Thank you so much. We hit, we're actually at 49.95, but that's close enough to 50 for me. <laughs> oh boy. Hey Blake, long time follower. Been reselling clothing for years, but I'm interested in starting up an additional income on my thrift store hauls. Is there anything specific you'd recommend? DVDs and books, I think, are a great place to start FBA. You can just set it and forget it. What is the illumination of your thoughts, of your lights? Oh, but I, I have to answer Purple Rube's question first. He has NFC North, NFC North thoughts. We got two bucks from, uh, from Todd Jumper. So, real quick, Todd, thank you so much. <coughs> NFC North. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to be in a Packers uniform this fall. Uh, I don't think that Justin Fields is going to be very good. Uh, I think that the Detroit Lions are going to surprise everyone going 7-10. and 10, We're going to have a crazy fan base over a mediocre season. And I think the Vikings end up winning the NFC North and making it to the divisional round of the playoffs because Kirk Cousins is underrated. Delvin Cook's going to stay healthy. Adam Thielen can catch anything. And their O-line is probably the best in the uh, NFC North. We'll see about how uh, Chicago does. Okay, those are my NFC North thoughts. Zachary Gates sends us five bucks. Zachary, thank you so much. And for Zachary, we give you this. Okay, um... For those of you who don't care about football, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, we're done with that. Uh, so, uh, let's see. What is the illumination of your lights used for photos? I really don't even use good lights at all. Um, I don't, I'm not selling a lot of, like, clothing. Mostly I'm selling just, like, oh, a VCR or, oh, you know, some books. The, the lights don't matter as much for me. How hard is it to get engaged for things on Amazon? I just signed up waiting for my code in the mail. It says, pack the man. It's going to differ uh, based on, um, you know, with the category and the brand. Certain brands are, you know, auto one gates. Uh, certain categories are very easy, like food is very easy. Toys is very easy. Uh, and then certain brands like Nike are pretty tough, and you have to jump, to, jump through some hoops. So it really depends on the, um, you know, on, on what it is specifically. But everything, you know, it's, it's not, there are, a lot of folks do it, so it's not impossible, right? Any advice for someone who is just now wanting to get into reselling? Top three tips if you could. Tip number one, try and sell things as fast as you can and get that cash flow going. Tip number two, always look up, if you're on eBay, if you're doing eBay, this is for eBay, look up sold listings and see how frequently the things sell as well at what price they sell at. Tip number three, 
do not skimp on packaging, trying to save money. What you last thing you want to do uh, is you know not pay for insurance, for example, and you lose two hundred bucks. Angelo says you woke my dog up. LOL. People, yeah, they either love or they hate that money bugle. It's a very, <laughs> it's a very polarizing um, aspect of the live stream. The chickens will come home to roost, regarding the economy, PPP, etc., says GW Brewer. Yeah, it, you kind of have to, right? I mean, it's, uh, I don't know, well, I don't know what else to say about it. Kind of sounds like dinosaurs from Jurassic Park that have a head cold. <laughs> That's what Brian said. Aaron Rodgers might be in a Jeopardy host uniform, says Brian. Yeah, we'll see about that, man. I don't, I, everyone. He, the man hosts one episode, and everyone goes, well, they're going to have him for a year. Like, I don't know if Jeopardy wants to have Aaron Rodgers hosting. You know, like, we don't know that. We can only assume. Any YouTube advice? I've noticed a trend where channels are getting crazy niche down. One for lives, one for eBay sales, one for thrift hauls. Yeah, the reselling niche on eBay is getting blown up. And there are a lot more people who make what I would call like soft content where it's more about making a good video and keeping your viewers entertained through uh, like a narrative process and editing as opposed to like, here's the advice, which is pretty much what my style of video has always been. Uh, and so when you see that, you're going to see people who previously did well in the niche try and find ways to uh, get the same amount of income. I think that I am lucky enough where um, I'm going to get the same amount of views in my videos no matter what. Um, I'm doing more Dollar Tree videos. I'm going to do more uh, palette videos because those appear to be my channel's most successful. Um, I don't think it's necessary to niche down like that. If you have a channel that's doing well in a certain niche, you might be persuaded to do it like that because you don't want to sacrifice your current viewers. But I think in the long run, my gut tells me it's better to have like a personal brand channel that you have a lot of uh, aggregate views on than a bunch of small niche channels. But I don't know. I Again, you know, your, your guess is as good as mine. What do you look for in pallets, asks Zachary. So mostly I'm just trying to pay... Uh, a low price per item, hopefully unmanifested because there seems to be, that's more of a gamble, but I like that gamble, uh, hopefully new. Um, I've had a lot of luck buying like people's private label inventory that I just sell at like a local auction or on eBay. Um, what you don't want to do is buy pallets of that kind of stuff for Amazon. Generally, you're going to want to take private label stuff and sell it elsewhere. But if you're buying like Target pallets, those are going to be much more um, accommodating towards the Amazon seller. Uh, but, you know, it really does matter. It matters where you sell. Non-copyrighted music says, I got an email yesterday that my eBay account suspended, but it doesn't really suspend. I'm still using it. Is it a glitch? Should I contact them? It could be a phishing scam. I don't know. Um, I would contact eBay through the website and see what's up. Because a common thing that phishing scams do is they say, your account suspended. Like, sign in here to appeal this. And then they steal your sign-in info and they, you know, rob you in one way or another. Doyle Warehouse says, have you done white label and what was it? I have done white label stuff. I've sold knives. I've sold uh, small appliances. I've sold... Um, flags. I've sold all sorts of stuff. Generally, uh, you know, my, my, my sales are fine and they taper off and I just don't reorder, uh, because there are people who are selling the same thing for a much smaller price. Um, you know, nothing, it's, it's just a way of making money. It's not very fun, but it's, a, it's a, it's like wholesaling pretty much. Dara says, it would be in your eBay messages if it was true, not just your email. Great tip, Dara. Suzanne says, if it is a message from eBay, oh yeah, everyone's saying, check if you get this um, suspension email, check your eBay messages. If it's not there, it's a scam. What is white label? White label is 
pretty much the same as private label. Um, if you get down to like the details, there's a few nuance, uh, nuance differences, but essentially it's buying a product that someone else makes under your own name uh, and potentially label. So like if, let's say, um, let's say I find somebody who cans cherries in Northern Michigan under the brand like Michigan Cherry Co., but they also sell just like cans of cherries that I can then label with my, with my own stuff or just sell unlabeled, that would be white labeling. It's wholesaling large quantities of items that do not have an existing brand attached to them, but are manufactured by someone who does. Uh, that's, that's pretty much how it's done. GW Brewer says, is it hard to get ungated for DVDs these days? Depends who you ask. Um, some people get ungated done, they get it immediately after going to AENT.com. Some people have to submit their invoices 25 times. So it's not, there, there is no consistency, unfortunately. Have you ever tried doing print on demand, asks LL. I have. If you look below the video, you can buy a Don't Be a Shithead t-shirt uh, through, is it Teespring? I have no idea. But that is print on demand. I make maybe 100 bucks a month doing that. I have no clue. I don't really check. I'm going to look through some of your older videos about books and DVDs. Any general advice regarding that uh, or selling on Amazon or eBay? Um, if you're going to do FBA, I say start off with used books. That is the easiest way to do it. You're going to learn the process. You're going to be in a lot better position a year from now than if you tried like retail arbitraging like, you know, something else. I see a lot of cheap Bluetooth Speakers that are white label, says Brian. Dara says, you could be suspended even though you still see all your listings, but they may be hidden from the general search. Uh, you can go through the help section and use chat or have eBay call you to confirm if you are, in fact, suspended. Definitely. It's, uh, you know, there are tons of scams out there, and you don't just want to go, you know, putting in your eBay password anywhere you do willy-nilly. That's uh, asking for trouble. So we have 115 in the chat. Let's get some more thumbs up going. And I'm curious, uh, those of you who are new, what brought you here and where are you from? We're getting a lot of new viewers in the chat. Love talking to new people, love answering new questions. But I'm curious what your interests are, what brought you here uh, and, and where you're from. Because who doesn't love hearing geographically based shout outs. I do. I love knowing where everybody's from. I, for those of you who are curious and don't know, am in southeastern Michigan. Ooh. Man, the weather has been nuts here. Wow. Saw you on TV, says Zachary Gates. You are my favorite on the show. You must be talking about Extreme Unboxing. I would, you know what? If you love the show, tell A&E to bring it back. I would love to do more of that, but uh, I think it's gone forever. <laughs> David from Las Vegas found you organically on YouTube. I like your style and personality. No flush, no BS. Yeah, certainly uh, I do not like to waste time with the things that I talk about. So here's it. This is interesting. I looked up beef jerky on, on eBay. Looks like someone sells uh, 40 pounds of Dakota Trails moist kippered beef jerky for $310. That's a shit ton of beef jerky. Hey, I wanted to share this, says B-Dog90. I decided to visit the same Goodwill on a daily basis. On day six, I found a gazelle Build-A-Bear I paid 278. Top offer is 1500. I didn't even know it was rare. Wow. Gazelle build bear Never heard of that, but I'm going to look it up right now on eBay and just talk about it for a second because that is so interesting. You know, some build a bears sell for so much. I'm just going to go over a few recent build a bear sales. Uh, because I think this is the kind of thing that if you're at a thrift store and you see a build a bear item, you want to keep an eye out for it. So it looks like the most recent sales of Build-A-Bear stuff. 
107 for a Build-A-Bear Flareon Pokemon plush. 207 for a, a Jumbo Snorlax Build-A-Bear. 160 Best Offer National Lampoon Christmas Vacation Clark Griswold Build-A-Bear. If you can find Pokemon Build-A-Bear, that is definitely a buy. Uh, if you can find any themed Build-A-Bear stuff, what I'm learning is going, going through these lists, people love that shit. This is a Build-A-Bear Pokemon Mew Online bundle. When did they sell this stuff? Pokemon Plushie, Build-A-Bear. So it looks like you can buy this stuff for like 50 or 60 bucks on the website. And then as it becomes discontinued, it sell, excuse me, sells for like 150 on eBay. That is fascinating. Let's see. Travis says, found you on YouTube recommended. Dara says, just north of Chicago, bordering the city. We got Zachary, north of Pittsburgh, PA. Zachary says, have you gotten into Pokemon, baseball, football, hockey card sales craziness? I have. I've been selling sealed boxes. I've been ripping some packs. Um, I have a second channel called Sports Cards Unboxings, where I've been posting the things that I rip and sell. Uh, just because that would be such a great niche to get into. Um, I've tried to post a few things on this channel, and nobody really cares about my sports cards unboxings. But what I'll do is I'm going to take this, uh, take the channel. I unboxed two Bowman uh, 2021 Mega Boxes. And um, I'm going to share that link with you guys on uh, in, in the chat because maybe you want to see how those cards are. And I actually was very surprised. I did. I, I, I'm going to make more money selling the cards that I opened, as opposed to um, if I had sold the boxes by themselves, which very rarely ever happens. And if you guys want to do me a favor and subscribe to that uh, YouTube sports cards uh, unboxing channel, I would be extremely grateful because that is a crowded niche. It doesn't pay very well, unfortunately. Uh, like the, the, the um, what's it called? Uh, the revenue per thousand views is pretty low in sports cards. But I personally have collected sports cards when I was younger. So it's like a cool, I would say it's a hobby. Sports cards is my hobby. I still make a bit of money doing it. But, um, you know, hour for hour, it's not what I do to, like, pay the bills. I'm going to get some more water. Uh, what I need from you guys is if you have more questions, put those questions below in the chat. Um, and if not, I think I might get out of here at the two hour mark. Okay, I'm back. We've got Christy Tierney from Massachusetts. Started selling on eBay and working on getting on Amazon. Found you on Amazon after watching The Flipping Accountant. Great channel. Y'all should check him out too. What size tape do I prefer? Two inch or three inch? Three inch. GW Brewer says, I watch regularly chat seldom from Seattle. Go Seahawks. Thanks for your work. Thank you for being a watcher, uh, a viewer, a subscriber. GW. For those of you who don't know what that means, uh, by, by tape size, they're talking about like how wide the tape is. 
The Gazelle is so rare, no sold comps on eBay. I joined a Facebook to find the value. Wow, that's crazy. I've never heard of that, but um, people love Build-A-Bear stuff. I don't, I don't understand it. I never did that stuff when I was a kid, but I'm sure there's a nostalgia factor um, for sure associated with that. So yeah, the Mew exclusive online bundle sold out. And it looks like the Mew Build-A-Bear exclusive online bundle. So let's see, it's, it's sold for $61 hairs. Pickup only, that's crazy. And then on, um, on, on eBay, it was selling for 120 so you could about double your money. A little bit less, probably after fees, after shipping. I bet people were making about 40 bucks off their initial $61 investment. And so I'm tempted to buy the Snorlax bundle. Is it even really? I bet there's some retail arbitrage opportunities right now. It looks like... Oh my god. It looks like when that first came out, the Snorlax was selling for like 200 bucks. But now the price has gone down to about once once Snorlax sells out of the Build-A-Bear store, if you guys are looking for a retail arbitrage risk investment right now, I would say go to that Build-A-Bear link that I posted. I'll post it again. Check out versus comps on eBay. How do you price rare or vintage items with no comps anywhere? What I'll do on rare or vintage items, if I think they're valuable, is I'll do an auction at a high price. So like, I sold a um, old Peter Pan book that I could not find any comps on from, it was a first edition uh, UK printing um, from like 1895 or something like that. And it had damage, it had spine damage. So no comps damage what what i did is i just put it at um like $75 plus or $75 on auction because i had no clue what that would be and it ended up selling for like 84 bucks um so i was pretty close to my my comp price uh but when i can't find uh a rare or vintage price i'm going to do auction at a high price uh, and then based on how many watchers it gets, based on how many views it gets, uh, if it doesn't sell, I'll adjust my price accordingly. Uh, if, it, if Let's say I have a book that I list on auction at 80 bucks and it gets two uh, watchers but no bids, I would relist that at 80 bucks or best offer. Let's say I list a t-shirt for on 40 bucks auction because there's no comps and it's like a rare Power Rangers t-shirt and it gets 16 views and uh, no watchers, then for that, I'll just lower the price and do an auction again. Um, you know, if you, if you know how to run auctions, I would say for most novices, running auctions is a way to lose a lot of money or miss out on a lot of potential profit. But if you start your auctions high and they're in certain niches that don't have a lot of sales history but do have a lot of search traffic... Uh, then that can end up being the smartest way to sell. But again, it's, it's a lot of trial and error, and it's a lot of being patient and being okay with like not selling in the first week and, and responding to how uh, the listing does. We've got two YouTubers in the house, Katie Reads and Profit Monsters. Katie is in Michigan. Drew from Profit Monsters is in Florida. How are you guys doing? You want to tell us about your most recent videos and I'll shout them out. Any discounts for the Build-A-Bear site? Not that I know of. Um, I have. I literally just found that deal as I was looking up uh, comps like on the live stream. So, um, so I don't really know. But uh, that I would not be surprised if in two or three months we see Snorlax Build-A-Bear or certainly by, you know, Christmas... 2021, we see those uh, Snorlax new with tags Build-A-Bear go.
going for uh, 200 bucks. I bet is will be like the baseline. Profit Monsters Drew has a video of him picking an Iowa with a guy he met on Instagram. Interesting. How'd that go? I guess watch the video to find out, right? Interesting, though. How did Drew, uh, the Allbirds controversy, you are at the middle of this. I am very curious to hear what your what you think is going to happen and if your account is fine and if they have, you know, issued an apology. If you look at Drew on Instagram, I don't remember your Instagram name. I think it's Profit Monsters. I don't know. Or maybe Drew the Profit Monster. I have no clue. I'm bad about that kind of stuff. Um, but if you look at his Instagram and if you'd be kind enough to share your Instagram handle, I would say follow him if you are curious about what's happening with Allbird Shoes, A L L. B I R D S, uh, because he is at the epicenter of that controversy. He caused it, you might even say. They haven't responded since last Friday. I think they are covering up their mistake, and I think it's still going to be a Vero. Yeah, you know what? That's some bullshit right there. I don't like it. But uh, I, I would tend to agree with you. I think they're just trying to do a, a very basic PR cover-up, and they don't really care. I mean, do you honestly think that people are counterfeiting used Allbirds? Maybe they are. I would think the one, I would think if anything, they would specify that new ones have to have some sort of verification. But just the way that they're going about it is, um, you know, corporations move slowly. It's difficult to turn a big ship. But you would think that they'd be a, a bit more, um, they'd be a bit, they'd be faster in their responses. But I don't know. I'm not there. Where is Allbirds headquartered? I'm gonna guess Pacific Northwest. Nope, San Francisco. Nine across is across two countries. They have their HQ in San Francisco. They're in Boston, Chicago, L.A., New York, and London. That's some bullshit, though. I have a video of it on my channel, which is more information than what's on my IG, but Drew Thrifts and Flips uh, on, on, on Instagram. I have never sold. Should I start on eBay or Amazon? Asks Mr. Maskman. Well, that depends what you want to sell. If you want to sell used books, I say start off on Amazon. If you want to sell clothing, you are going to be limited to eBay as opposed to Amazon. But there's also sites like, or uh, platforms like Mercari and uh, Etsy that will work just fine too. All right, guys, we are just past the two-hour mark. I'm going to head out. I appreciate all of your viewership. Uh, remember, if you're new, subscribe. Hit the bell icon in that corner for notifications because we go live every Wednesday around noon Eastern. Eat some lunch, listen to me talk about resale stuff, and keep your eyes peeled for my bolo lists. I think I am ready to do some uh, new drop slash discontinued item bolo lists. Um, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, but, uh, but I think that that is going to be in store. All right, guys, again, any more comments, uh, any more questions, put them in the comments below. But um, I think that's it. And as always, don't be a shithead.